Hello everyone, it's Wilson here. Today I want to solve an absolute value inequality with two absolute values. Okay, so as you can see here on the left side, there are two absolute values and we want to sum them up and that's supposed to be what? Less than or equal to eight. And we are finding this X that will satisfy this inequality. So how do we do that? First, we actually need to think about the equation because we're going to use the testing point method to do, to do this. Um, if you have seen my other videos, you actually have seen me uh, graphing the function on the left side, graphing the function on the right side, and then we see uh, which portion of the graph will satisfy the inequality. I would actually be doing that in the next video, but I don't want to do it for this one. I'm just going to just without graphing, let's see how we can actually solve this inequality. Okay, so first we are going to solve the equation. We got to consider this equation right here. So what is the equation that we are considering? We are considering this equation, absolute value x plus three plus absolute value x minus one is equal to eight. Okay, so we want to consider this equation here. Then you may say, how do we solve this equation? Um, to solve this equation, what we are going to do is that we are going to break the problem down into multiple cases so that we can remove the absolute values. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, first, let's just look at case one. Okay, so case one is right here. Case one is, um, let's just pick the easiest case for case one. That's when the stuff inside the absolute values would uh, would be uh, all positive or non-negative in this case. So we can include zero in there. Okay, so what are we talking about? We are saying that x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 0 and x minus 1 also greater than or equal to 0. So when the stuff inside the absolute value is non-negative, what we can do is that we can simply just remove the absolute value, right? So we have the equation that's x plus 3 plus x minus 1 is equal to 8. Okay, we don't need the absolute value anymore. Now let's solve this equation. This is a basic linear equation here. So if you add the x's together, you're gonna get two x. And then now what do we get here? This is three minus one, that's two, right? Eight minus two is going to be six. So you get two x equals six. So x is equal to three. And as you can see here, when x equals three, x plus three is six, so that's positive, right? Three minus one, that's going to be two, so that's also positive, so that will uh, fit under this case right here. And also when you have six plus two, that will give you the eight, so that will also satisfy the equation. Okay, so that's case one. Now let's consider case two. So case two, let's also um, just go in the other direction when they're both negative. Okay, so case two is when x plus three is less than zero and x minus one is less than zero. Okay, so when that happens, okay, when that happens, then when you remove the absolute value, you are going to negate whatever that's inside the absolute value because the stuff in there is already negative. So if you put a minus sign in front of it, it will turn it into a positive quantity. So what do we do? We are going to just put a minus sign. Okay. And then we have X plus three and then another minus sign, right? And then X minus one, and then that's equal to eight. So now same, um, it's, just what a linear equation, right? So we are gonna get negative x, negative x, negative two x. Okay, so we get negative two x right here. Actually, let's just distribute the the negative signs first. So we get negative two x is equal to um, that's negative three plus one. So that's negative two. Add to the the other side, you get positive ten, right? So x is equal to negative five. So we get another solution to that equation, but there are more cases, okay? So there are more cases. That's when one of them is positive and the other one is negative, then what happens? Or when one of them is uh, zero and what happens to the other one, right? So let's do that. And you actually will be having like more cases in, in this situation, but um, 
let's just look at that. So we are going to get um, case three. Okay, that's when x plus three. Okay, it's greater than or equal to zero, and the other one is going to be less than zero. Um, there's one thing that I actually want to point out right here is that um, these this equal sign right here can be put here or here. Um, as we do the calculation, you will see that it doesn't really matter. But if you want to just really consider all possible cases, then you are going to have a lot of cases, which is not something that I'm going to do here because that will be just, they're actually quite trivial as you do the calculation, you will see. Okay, so now what's going on? Um, when this is positive, that or non-negative, that means we can simply just remove the absolute value. But that one, you need to negate that. So you got to put a minus sign in front of it because it's late, right? So let's do that. So we have x plus 3 and then minus, right? And then you have the x minus 1 is equal to 8. You see what's going on here? When you just do the calculation, you can see that the x's will get canceled. And you actually will just get no solution in this equation. See that you are going to get no solution because the x's will get canceled, as you can see. The x's will get canceled. Then you're going to get 4 equals 8 right here. You're getting a false statement, right? So no solution for this one. No solution for just this case, right? And then we should also consider the other case right here. There is a case four. And then we have x plus three, right? That's less than zero. And then we have what? X minus one, that's greater than or equal to zero. In this case, I'm just keeping the, uh, the equal sign with the, the expression that's positive, but as you can see it actually doesn't really matter that much right here, right? So what we are going to do is that um, we do the calculation just like case three, but you know that we are also going to get no solution. Um, so we have x plus three with the minus sign in the front. And then we have plus x minus one. And then what do we get here? Eight. Okay, so we get negative x minus 3 minus, no, actually plus x, right? And then minus 1 is equal to 8. So see that the x's, again, will get canceled. And then you are going to be getting what? Negative 4 is equal to 8. So you get no solution for this case. Okay, so that's, um, those are the two solutions that you have. And what happens right now is that we are going to actually go back and solve this inequality right here. We got to do the testing points. So first thing here is to just draw a lumber line. Okay, just draw the lumber line. And then we are going to plot the 3 and the negative 5 on there. So negative 5 is right here. And then 3 is on here. Okay, so now let's just pick some values to plug in. Um, should be really straightforward to do that, right? So let's do that. Um, let's pick a zero right here. Yeah, so if you pick zero, then what do we get here? You pick zero back in here, you get absolute value of three. Plus, pick the zero in here, you get absolute value of negative one. Is it less than or equal to eight? Yes, so that works. Okay, now let's pick another one. Let's just pick some number that's greater than three. Um, <clears throat> let's just pick four, right? If you pick four, you're gonna get four plus three, that's absolute value of seven plus four minus one, so that's three. But is this less than or equal to eight? That's not true, right? So that's no. And then what about this side here? This side is when you pick the number that's like uh, less than negative five, which is going to be, let's say negative six, right? If you put the negative six in here, you are gonna get negative three inside the absolute value plus negative six minus one, negative seven. 
that's going to be positive 10. So that's not less than or equal to eight. So that's not the interval that we want. So the interval that we really want in this case would just be the interval between negative five and three. Remember, remember that um, those two solutions will satisfy this equation and the equation is actually included in the inequality. So that means we're gonna make the solid dots at those two endpoints right here for this interval. So now what is the solution to this inequality? It's actually simple, just based on the shading, you can write down the interval notation, which is going to be what? Brackets, negative five, three, brackets, and you are finished. See that it's actually quite fun to solve this, right? To help me make math learning available to everyone, please share my videos to others and subscribe to my channel. It will give me support and make more videos. Let's work together to help students and children learn math more easily.